which we've gathered today because the clock that's been uh, rescued off St Luke's Reddell Hill when it was being demolished uh, is being put up on the tower of St Peter's Cradley and we're thrilled to see it go up because it's preserving a little piece of local history and I know that the people of St Luke's also are just deeply touched that something of their church which is no longer is actually going to be visibly present all the time whenever you drive past to the public. For the last five years we've been working hard to fundraise uh, around about £11,500 uh, through fundraising activities and through grants as well to install this dial on the tower here at St Peter's for all to see. And um, it's all started back in 2016 when we knew St Luke's was going to be demolished and we went to St Luke's to try and get the organ blower from there because our organ blower here at St Peter's was, was broken and not repairable and so to get the organ working again we got the blower from St Luke's uh, to power our organ here which is now fully working and at the time we went to St Luke's we noticed that this clock dial here was on the front of the church and was most likely to be scrapped during the demolition and we thought how nice it would be to save this for posterity and install it and restore it here for St Peter's and the people of Craigley. There was a space on the tower where a clock should be but since 1875 there's never been enough money to put one on there so uh, it's about time that we, we got one on and uh, this is the start of the work to to get it installed. One of our congregation members and James drove up to Cumbria. We get three quotes as you always do for a church thing. And uh, so it was taken up to Cumbria where bits that had broken off were resoldered on and it was re-gilded. Uh, the hands were repaired. Apparently the hands are not the original hands but we have no idea what, what happened to those. They've had to be trimmed to fit into, into this space. And that was done. And then uh, the people from Cumbria brought it back down to us and it's been set up in the front of the church, tick, tick, ticking away. And this is how it would have looked back in 1949 when it was brand new installed at St Luke's down the road. Now today we have with us Stuart from Cumbria Clock Company, whose firm, uh, Cumbria Clock Company, they restored the dial and made it look as good as new. Uh, so Stuart today has visited to drill the centre hole through the tower wall which will enable the drive rods to go through the wall to drive the hands round and he will now go away, make the rods the correct length and return in a couple of weeks to install the dial on the tower and fix it all up so that it's in working order. Yes, because we've had to drill through the, uh, through the wall which was uh, basically the best part of a metre thick and we ended up having to go through a lot of the blue brick within the wall and it took me about three hours to drill one single hole. So we did that uh, partly out for the hoist and then partly within the building. The process done today is first of all made a template of the dial for the new dial fixings made of uh, stainless steel and then uh, gone up and uh, obviously drilled all the holes and then uh, used uh, some chemical anchor fixing for the uh, stainless steel fixings. Well, we put the hands on the clock and it's uh, it had a, a blessing from, from the vicar uh, which was uh, which should keep it in good stead for a good few years now. So here we are at the top of the tower and we're about to bless the new clock that is going up today here at St Peter's Cradley. Heavenly Father, we pray that this clock would be a blessing to this community. That as we think about times and places in our lives, that we will understand that we live all of our lives in your time. And so we ask you to bless this clock in the name of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. There you go. Short and sweet. What's it like being up here? I am thoroughly enjoying being up here. The views are fantastic, the sun is shining, and the uh, platform's a little bit wobbly, but that's fine. 
Other visitors today have included uh, Chapman's Electrical down the road in Cradley Heath and they are very kindly installing all the wiring that's necessary for the clock to work and they'll be returning to install that in the next week or two. We are extremely grateful to them because they've donated their time and, uh, and skills for that. And uh, it's quite fitting really because Chapman's Electrical did fit the dial at St Luke's back in 1949 and uh, we do have the original bill for that work which is about £300 which was a lot of money back then. And uh, we're also very grateful to Kieran Williams from the Platform Hire Centre who has provided the platform for the work to be done today and he'll be returning with the platform in a couple of weeks to install the dial as well. The, the clock was coming here and to, not to be scrapped with the rest of, you know, demolished and everything. We're, we're excited about that. And we felt that as we'd electrified the old clock at St Luke's, we thought we needed to electrify the clo clock at St Peter's. And we thought as part of our gift, if you like, back, we would do that free. So we, we provided the labour and the materials to do that, to, to put the wiring in for, for free for that, you know, because that's, that's how our community operates. And we, and we had a pleasure to do it. There used to be a clock on the original building from 1789, uh, but when the tower was put on in 1875, that clock disappeared. It's the 21st of January, 2022. Uh, and I've just fi uh, finished, completed the uh, installation of five electromagnetic hammers into the bell frame. Um, what we've got, we've got five hammers that externally sound against the, uh, each individual bell uh, on every quarter of the hour. So it does the Westminster chimes. Uh, the master clock system is an independent system. It's got a built-in memory which alters the time uh, from British summer time to Greenwich Mean Time automatically each year. On any power cut it will sense, it'll know what, what time the clock stopped at and then once the power comes back on it will it'll move the hands forward to the correct time showing on their master clock. On the first day, we managed to get all the, all the hammers up into up into position and uh, started to fix them all down. And then uh, it was just a case of uh, making sure everyone hit in the correct part of the bell and also didn't uh, impinge on any of the ropes or wheels or any of the bell stays. Because what we've got, we've still got um, bells that ring a full circle. So they've got to be in a safe position at all, t at all times. The clock will ring every quarter of an hour and it will do the Westminster chimes. It starts from seven o'clock in the morning and first chime is seven o'clock in the morning and last chime is 12 midnight. It's got a facility to, in the, in the bell ringing chamber, which makes the, uh, which has got a switch there, which, which is what we call a ringer safety switch. So that will stop the uh, clock from ringing whenever they are ringing the bells. And also it has got a funeral toll switch, a remote switch down in the, in, by the, uh, the bottom of the stairs that they can use to activate the hammer on the tenor bell for funeral services. As you can see there, the stairs, the, the, uh, the ladder, the steel ladder going up to the roof where Luke Perry is coming to fit the new weather vane in another couple of weeks time. So what, what we've got up here, we've got eight bells in total. Uh, only five have been used, four for the quarters and one for the, uh, for, the, for the hour strike and funeral bell. So what we've done, we've fitted them to bells number two, three, four and seven for the quarter, for the quarter chimes, because that's, uh, that's the best notes for the quarter, Westminster quarters. And bell number eight, which is the tenor bell for the, for the hour strike and also for the funeral tolling bell. Okay, here we are in the bell ringing chamber. 
and as I said before what we've got we've got a ring of safety switch on the wall at the moment it's got a red indicator on there which means that the hammers are live which means unsafe to ring simple case of turn the switch green light means that the clock hammers won't ring whilst they're ringing a full circle green light means it's safe to ring today my involvement in the in the switching on of the chimes i was actually there and i switched the chimes on okay. other people had done all the work prior to this but i actually flicked the switch welcome to st peter's church here in cradley it, today's the day when we turn the clock chimes on for the first time uh, this marks a, a major part in the clock project here where we saved the dial from St Luke's when that church closed down and was sub subsequently demolished. I'd like to invite Roger Whitehouse who's with us today who was one of the last church wardens at St Luke's and very much without Roger the project wouldn't have happened. Roger very kindly allowed us access to go and measure up and so, sort out getting the dial. So Roger I'd love for you to be able to turn the switch on for us today and start the chimes at 11 o'clock. With pleasure. When was the move? Excellent, thank there you very much. When, when the clock was uh, in situ at St Luke's and it had been for many years, uh, when it was the decision was made to close the church, uh, it was with great regret it was closed, but a lot of the equipment in the church was still good and, and has been moved around the world. The, 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 the blower for the organ came to St Peter's in Cradley here and that took some moving because it weighed over a quarter of a tonne but the clock being so high off the ground up the tower and very little support up there was a tremendous um, job and Luke Perry in the end uh, was the man who actually got it out of the situation it was in and lowered it to the floor. So my parents, uh, Mary and Les Billingham, uh, attended St Luke's Church in Cradley Heath for many, many years um, and church was a big part of their life uh, and my dad was church warden uh, for several years as well and he also dealt with a lot of the maintenance at the church and one of his jobs was to clamber up ladders to actually adjust the time on the, uh, the church clock. Um, which all frightened us all to death because he was getting on in years. People here have had to work very hard to get their money to afford to get it done and, and they've got planning permission and little bits going wrong but there and to actually switch them on this morning and listen to the chimes it was very very exciting really you know I just enjoyed it and it's, it's wonderful that that part of it is now reached a near completion stage there's just lights to be put on the tower to light up the clock but when st luke's church um you know um had to shut down we were all really sad about it because it, it was such a big part of of our family's lives really um so it, it's a bittersweet really we were sad and and then you know when we heard that um the clock could um was going to be transferred to st peter's you know it, it really pleased us because it feels like it's it's a bit of our our parents um you know and and the service today and, and hearing the chimes today um just brings back some lovely memories really of, of st luke's and, and time spent there i felt very emotional actually yeah yeah i felt as if uh you know, although my parents aren't here, um, I did feel as if hopefully they're, they're looking down on us and, and thinking, you know, that they've done a real good job and and that's uh, a little bit of St Luke's that, that's still with us really. So, yeah, quite emotional today. My father, yeah, he was town master, as I say, for 50 years, got a clock. <laughs> um, but he, his brother was a bell ringer, his... Um, other brother was a bell ringer. His um, his, well, uh, his nephews and nieces were bell ringers. In the tower, I think there was only two non-family bell ringers at one stage, um, because that was what they did. And of course, they rang in peace. They rang in for the coronation, and they rang. What did they call the man? Uh, half peel, full peel. Half peel. Yeah, yeah, they they rang full peels. My mum 
will tell the story of because um, uh, a peel goes on for a long long time and if you make a mistake that's the end of the peel and they'll, they'll do it for hours and then somebody makes a mistake and that's the end of your peel and you can't claim it <laughs> so my mum mom used to tell us stories of that happening this clock project uh, happened by chance when James saw that the clock up at St Luke's was going to be sent to scrap he asked whether we could have it and so it came to St Peter's and there the project began and it's a project that he has started uh, seen to all the contractors we've raised the money together and today it's come to a joyful completion now that the clock is functioning up on St Peter's Tower preserving something of our heritage, uh, our metalwork heritage in this area. So we're very thankful to James, to God, for the completion of this project. Yeah. <laughs>